This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC. Welcome uh, to my first uh episode or podcast of Doc Talks. Uh, I'm Dr. Rob Page, the new host of Doc Talks, and I'm here in our new set with our new chairs um, and with my first guest. Uh, This is Dr. Larry Bushkell. Uh, Dr. Bushkell has been a dermatologist in Knoxville, I found out recently, since 1981. Um, He's been in practice here, and I've had the fortune of working with Dr. Bushkell for about the last 20 years. Uh, which has been certainly a blessing to me. Um, And Dr. Bushkell is here, considering we are now beginning with the summer months and uh, Memorial Day has now passed us and everybody's going outside. He is here to talk about uh, the use of sunscreen. Dr. Bushkell. Well, Rob, thank you very much for inviting me here today. And it's it's a pleasure to talk about a subject that I feel very strongly about and that is preventive medicine. And we're talking about preventive medicine with your skin. This is extremely simple to talk about. The first thing that I'd mention are sunscreens, which are going to be shown on your screen to you. Uh, and the sunscreens, it's very simple. You want to get a number 5050 if you can. Uh, We have an array here that are made of two different types. One are zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, which are basically physical barriers. The other three have chemicals and uh, they are very good. Uh, Four of the five you can get for around $10 each. The one that'll be shown by Lareche Posse is $33. It is the number one rated sunscreen, but it is not necessarily that much better than the others for the difference in price. The less expensive ones are fine. Um, The reason there are two different types I'm gonna address right off the bat is the fact that, that Some people say that the oxybenzone, which is a chemical in the um, three sunscreens that that are chemical-based, can be a cancer-causing agent. Now, I take the attitude that that people working in government are basically honest people. They're trying to do their job. The sunscreens have been out for a long time. The FDA is looking at this question but they've not taken any of the sunscreens off the market. So as this is externally applied, I think there's a low evidence that there's significant absorption. And as soon as the FDA knows absolutely, they'll either reassure us or they'll take those products off the market. If you wanna be absolutely safe, you'll use one of the two products that are advertised for kids only and that would be the zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. The time to use these for everybody is between the 1st of March and the end of October here in Knoxville. That's the time where you can get sunburned. Now you can get sunburned any time between those. You can be standing in a pouring down thunderstorm in April and get sunburned because the rays that are cancer causing and the rays that give you a sunburn first are invisible. You can't see them. The sunscreens protect you from that. So those are the UV rays. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. So, so, um, so Larry, you mentioned 50 with these different sunscreens, and I know that on the market they carry a variety of different sunscreens. They go all the way from, I think, 15 all the way to 100. Why is it that they have, why is that, you know, since 50 is the magic number, why do they have some that are lower and then some that are even higher than that? Well, the ones that have been lower, I'm not really sure why they have them, except they've been on the market for a while and people are used to that. The higher the number 50, as I understand it, the FDA cannot measure it higher than, than 50. Industry may be able to do it, but that's all that the FDA can recommend. 
Gotcha. I mean, is there a difference in these different sunscreens based upon the price? I'm sure there's some benefit, particularly the one that I mentioned that is the most expensive. The rest of them are all very similar. Uh, Consumer Reports has a rating system and, and several of those I have in front of you. I didn't have the Water Babies by Copper Tone, but a 50 in that is, is also very good. But paying more does not necessarily make it better. Now, given that, I think a cream is better than a lotion or particularly a spray. I do have one spray there. And, and the time to use that, in, in answer to your question partially, the time to put it on is first thing in the morning. If you're going to go out to the beach at 10 o'clock in the morning, at 8 o'clock, put that sunscreen all over your body. And then when you go out, you're going to have a good barrier. Putting it on as you get ready to go in the water will not work as well. Now, why is that, Larry? Well, just because there's a bit of penetration and you have a, a reservoir type of effect where, where it, it's allowed to really work into the skin and cover everything. And usually you're going to do a better job when you're not rushed putting on the sunscreen as versus when you get right down there and you want to get into the water. Absolutely, when you're hurried. So, so you apply the sunscreen at the, ideally a couple of hours before you go outside. How often, once you're outside, should you reapply sunscreen? Most of the um, sunscreens will say good for 80 to 90 minutes. So every hour and a half that you're out there, it would be a good idea to reapply it. And should and any changes based upon activity, if we're in the water or if we're sweating a lot or? Both of those, I agree. Yeah. Those definitely you're going to want to put it on. If you're out, been out in the ocean or in the swimming pool, when you get out, reapply it. Gotcha. So, um, so Larry, we have the different types of sunscreen and we have the different SPFs of sunscreen. Um, you mentioned applying it first thing in the morning. For how long during the day should we apply? Are there particular hours during the day that we should always make sure that we have sunscreen on? Or is it just basically any time the sun is up? Uh, between 10 and 3 are the peak hours that, that you should have the sunscreen on. But again, if you put it on early in the day, then you just don't have to think about it. And then, you, and then you want to ideally be applying it. What about if we're uh, running around, if we actually have clothes on and we're actually not fully exposed, if we're not in a bathing suit or if we're doing a sporting event, should we just continue to apply that to the areas that are sun exposed or? That's more than I'd ever expect. <laughs> That's why, you know, you're standing in front of the mirror, seven o'clock in the morning, put it on then, just leave it on for the rest say. of the day, and that and that works well. So along with your morning routine, you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you comb your hair, you always put on your sunscreen to make sure you have it on for the duration of the day. I measured it today. It took me 10 to 15 seconds to apply it to my face, ears, and neck. Gotcha. gotcha. So, um, Larry, let's, let's go back and touch on a subject because I know it's something that's been in, in the news, at least something that I've heard recently about uh, about the actual that sunscreen not actually protecting you from skin cancer, but causing skin cancers. Now, is there any truth to that? And I know you touched upon that recently, but I like uh, you touched upon that previously. But I'd like to sort of expand on that just a little bit. Well, people don't wear sunscreen because they say I want to get vitamin D. Right. I want to get my vitamin D, and vitamin D is very important. <clears throat> but the problem is that vitamin D can be uh, absorbed quite variably. The same group of people you can line up on the beach and then measure their vitamin D will be drastically different. So we in the Academy of Dermatology have felt that go ahead and wear your sunscreen, take your vitamin D orally, and then you know you get it. So is there any particular, so I, I know that the, the recommendations, or at least I've heard in the news occasionally, that you don't need a lot of sun exposure in order to be able to absorb or activate the vitamin D that actually has this, got this protective uh, effect. And of course now, with even with coronavirus, we're hearing reports about vitamin D and perhaps that even being preventive. Um, is there any benefit to any more sun or, or just certain particular types of sun or how long we should be in the sun? Well, again, we feel like 
any sun exposure is going to give you that. And we recognize that people are out in the sun and people forget. But if you're going out in the sun just to get the vitamin D benefit, then you're not, you don't know what you're getting because there's so, so much variable absorption. People are young, healthy, they go out there, they measure them for vitamin D and they don't absorb very much, you know, when they measure it in their blood level. So taking a vitamin D supplement, I think, is very important. Okay. So, so rather than actually try to get more sun to, you know, presumably get more vitamin D, we should just be taking the supplement and then just basically rely upon the fact that we're actually all outside at all to the fact that we're going to be activating or absorbing this vitamin D. That's right. Absolutely. Any, anything else you'd like to touch upon that you find that you think is important well, about this? Well, you know, I think it's important that you do cover all areas. I see quite a few skin cancers that occur on the ears and things like that. Be sure you, you get behind your ears. A lot of men we see uh, have skin cancers on their ears. Uh, women, particularly on the lower legs, we see a lot of that. Uh, women wear more slacks now, but... Uh, <clears throat> In the past, they wore skirts, and I see from about 60 years of age on, I will see a lot of skin cancers on the lower legs of women as compared to men. The other thing that you can do is to have a physical barrier, and I bought, brought here a couple of hats. The best ones, for men at least, you wear, and you, it covers your whole ears to give you additional protection and covers over your face. And that can work very well. Also, a, a ball cap, if you're going to be in windy, be out on a boat or such as that, a ball cap will give you great protection for your scalp. And we're all thinning out on the scalp. <laughs> Me and, more than you. <laughs> and, but it doesn't give you any coverage on your ears. So you want to be sure to have the sunscreen. But just a combination of a hat and wearing sunscreen will do wonders. Now, I, I know also, Larry, that they actually sell some clothing that has SPF values in it. Is there any benefit to doing that? I mean, or why, why do they have clothing with SPF? Well, that's because uh, sun comes through. If you hold up a t-shirt to the light and you can see light through it, then the sun can come through it. And we do see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of skin cancers on the back, either from just direct exposure or even through garments. People come in and say, I always wear a t-shirt and they still have a skin cancer. Now, some of these uh, dry fit fabrics, that, the breathable fabrics can be quite good. And you can wear long sleeves in the summer if you're out working in the yard or such as that. And uh, you'll still get good benefit from that. So, so, so make sure we can cover most of the areas of our body with clothing. Always make sure we put sunscreen on in the morning. Um, always use an SPF with a, with a sun protective, always use a sunscreen with an SPF uh, protective factor or 50 or higher. Um, and effectively, it really does not necessarily matter which type of sunscreen we use. It's the number on there, that, not the price, but the number on there and the num magic number is 50. That's exactly right, Most Rob. Excellent. So, uh, Larry, uh, you know, uh, in conclusion, is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything else that's uh, informative about sunscreens? Anything you want to make sure that, that patients know or people know uh, before they get out in the sun? Maybe something about some of the skin cancers you've treated over the years and just, you know, what, uh, you know, what, what, what sort of cancers that actually uh, this causes and just the possible, uh, you know, repercussions of that? Well, they're all cancers, uh, skin cancers are at the least an inconvenience. And it's certainly much better to take 10 or 15 seconds in the morning to put on a sunscreen than later on in life, where maybe you have other comorbidities on blood thinners and things like that, to have to be laying on a table and have someone cutting on your face. I mean, it's a, to me, the trade-off is so easy Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and especially when it comes to getting cancers on, you know, on cosmetically important areas. You know, I've got to make sure that I, you know, keep looking good and just, uh, you know, make sure I keep my skin looking young and putting on sunscreen and making sure that I don't get cancers. So, um, well, Larry, I want to thank you, Dr. Bushkell, so much for being here with thank us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all the uh, useful information that you've given us. Um, 
you uh, you'll you'll see on the bottom of your screen as we went through here the type of sun type of sunscreens we've had. Um, and Dr. Bushkell is uh, he's working here in Knoxville still. You're you're working at Interfaith Clinic and you're doing you're doing work in Knoxville, which is certainly very important. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to this uh, podcast of uh, Doc Talks. Um, and please join us again. Thank you so very much. This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC.